Ryan Reynolds, Justice Smith, Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. Listen, as a mother, unajua ukiwa nyumbani kila siku unashangaa utafanya nini na watoto, especially when they close school. You're trying to get their itinerary, you're just planning 8 to 8:05. You try to plan every single thing that they're going to do. Watching movies such as this one, this is really interesting. Make sure that you check it out. Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the trend. My name is Amina Hashtag Hey Amina at the Trend Live. Tuambia mambo vipi and where are you watching the show from? We would love to know where are you enjoying it from now for the past few weeks if you've been watching the show celebrate one of the most important people in our lives and that has got to be our moms so now together with geisha we've been celebrating moms and we asked you to send us your stories and we received hundreds if not thousands of emails and dms and just letters dropped off to the office of people sharing their amazing stories of how their moms constantly and continuously just were selfless and sacrificed so much so that they can be where they are today and one such person is dickens Ngicho. he has a very interesting story take a look it's brought to you by geisha hashtag mom anakwita Hey everybody and welcome back. This is the trend hashtag hey Amina at the trend live. Now in case you've not noticed we've decided you know what let's just take the show on a whole other tangent because there's real life and real life stories are out there. By out there I mean out here which is why we decided to come here and hear about stories such as my guest who you're about to meet. He was born in Dick, uh, Dickens Ngicho, um, uh, born in uh, Majengo area. His uh, parents passed on when he was quite young and forced him to go back to Ushago in Homa Bay where he stayed with his grandparents. And after, you know, just being moved from one home to another, seeing as no one could really afford to take in him and his brother, he came to Nairobi where he lived with his uncle for a short while who parted with his wife, got another wife who did not like Dickens. And from there, his story just became even sadder. But it does have a happy ending. Let's focus on that with the hashtag Hey Amina. Let us know where you're watching from and let's welcome Dickens on the show. Sasa? Amina. home. All right. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so, up on the home. Up on the nyumbani. Yes. Lakini kabla tulfike home, tulikuwa home ingine hapo. Kabisa. And when you came back from, uh, you know, home a bit after any, una move from inyumba to another home, watu tu any, una chumba kuwa afford, uka kuja Nairobi kwa patana na nkule yako. Yeah. Aka wana bibi mwingine. So, no, we actually bibi wake wa kwanza. So, uh, the reason why I came back to Nairobi is I always wanted to join the University of Nairobi in Pasujan some time and, and then get to start get to start practicing. So uh, this this uncle of mine who had kept in touch amongst all like our relatives, she he sorry he had kept in touch and would uh, help me pay school fees and just other other many things. So when I came back, I decided to live with him. Uh, he's one of my youngest maternal uncles. So mm. uh, the family is still young. His wife never got to interact with my parents because my parents died way back. So the wife was a good, she was a good aunt to me until this day. Uh, it was some, it was on Thursday. She just called me to the living and told me because we are moving to a smaller house. We, uh, we, all of us. Yeah, they, okay. they, oh, me they. excluded. Oh, yes. okay. We are moving to a smaller house. So uh, you are going to be forced to look for another place to, to live in. And then at what point then did they ask you to leave and you went to live in the Bibandas? No, so after my aunt had asked me to look for another place, mm -hmm. I think I had about six or seven clothes and my academ academic documents. So I just put them inside my bag. I was teaching in some school. Uh, in that school, I was teaching class four. But seeing a main house like this, there's always some veranda out there. So the school decided to construct some Kibanda for class four. So I was the class teacher of class four. Now, it was inside that kibanda where I was spending my, my nights. Oh. But uh, I just joined UN. So, you know, I joined UN when I wasn't having a place to, to stay. Um, and you are now joining university or yes. you're already in university? I had just joined. You're I joined just during joined. that time. So how are you joining? I mean, how much were you earning at the time, if you can share that? I was being paid 6000 And how much was your fee? 80000 80, An average 80, 80, 80, 80, per semester, yes. Per sem? Mm. You're earning 6000 a month. Yeah, and my brother was also in Form 3. Uh, I was just the one taking care of his school fees. And how much was that? It was about uh, 30, 33000 per year. And you're homeless? Yes. At this time? Yes. Where were you getting food? 
Could you afford it? They so, said. you know, as you know, teachers in most of the schools in Nairobi or in urban centers, mm. students during lunch time, they sit in their class and the teachers serve them. Mm. So during the time I would be serving my, my, my pupils, I would take a cup and put some rice or ugali and just cover it and put it in my drawer. So I would come back from school and uh, eat that. So I would sleep and, and make sure that my alarm wakes me up around five mm. so that I leave the school compound Quickly before people uh, before come in and find the teachers you. and students, and then the end of around the for almost two hours up to around Samoja. Then don't you could just should lay like um, mm. not from the house. Uh, How did you manage to? to when I was that? joining campus, my first year for semester, I shared with some of the church members I knew about uh, how I wanted to uh, plan for a fundraiser and that they come along, uh, they come through and support me raise about a hundred thousand because the school of Jansen University in Irwin. For semester first year is 92,500. So uh, the church helped me raise 50,000. You then decided to talk to your friend in school. I mean, how did you even decide to open up to someone who then shared? Okay, so uh, I have friends uh, at church who kind of noticed that I wasn't the way I was. So uh, I, I shared with them that I was homeless and they asked me to come to church and that they share with church elders. And uh, there's a Sunday we went to church and they shared with the church elders, and the church elders asked me, and I confirmed. And they raised, they raised some that some cash, about fifteen thousand. They asked us to go to Moja to look for a single room. We went, found one, and we paid. And I stayed there for two months because uh, there wasn't any sustainability plan on how I would, you know, continue paying my rent. Eric uh, and Wiki were my friends, so uh, when during the time I was homeless. I would come and visit them during the weekends. I was always like not having nothing to help me, you know, take care of myself. So this idea I shared with Eric when I came to visit him. Eric, Eric, uh, I, I just asked him to help me the hundred bob so that I'd be able to get uh, fare the following day for, you know, going to school. Uh, so I, I don't know. Eric went to the bedroom. My, um, his mother was in the bed bedroom and shared with the mother. And then when Eric came out, he brought me a thousand bob. So. I asked him, I'd seen a change, but I was like, no, mama said you just use that. Okay. And I was like, Elfumoja. Uh, I, really, I really broke down. You know, at this, at this point, you feel like there's no light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah, there's the hope of, you know, the graduating, yeah. the graduation from Nairobi mm -hmm. University. But, yeah. you know, it's, it was very difficult for you. Yeah. But during this time is when, you know, your luck, uh, you know, changed for the better yes and you met your mom now just before i met her when i joined campus i shared with some of my lectures about my situation and uh, i also became a class rep and, and later the chairman of the school of journalism so during the time i was in school a lot of my lecturers and uh, i don't know if i should mention them because they would allow me sit for end of semester exams without having registered or paid and it was basically because of of, of, of them knowing that I wasn't having a home and they just wanted to support in their own way. So I did all my, most of my exams without paying school fees and at mm. the University of Nairobi it's not easy, you cannot do that. And uh, I'm done with school so I owe the university about 300,000 shillings but I'm done with school so they supported me in so many ways. Mm. Oh you still have a debt? Yeah, about okay. 300,000. All right. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, shout out to the teachers. You know, teachers are very important yeah. who help you because you know, they play such an important role in trying to, you know, even just allowing you to, even if it's, you know, doing your job yeah. on the side, you know, not making it for some classes. Um, and, you know, some of them even give food and give money for fair. The others who gave me fair. Mm. The others who are, I was just so close to, they gave me fair. There's Dr. Kamau Mwangi who paid for my two units. Wow. Yes. She, he gave me 12,000 to pay for a unit in a particular semester, I was in third year. Mm. And this year, he also called me to his office and gave me another 12,000 to pay. So it was great. Even just after I'd shared with him my situation. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 24,000, and I paid my two units because we paid 12,000 per unit. So Eric told me that Dickens, every Sunday, every Friday after you're done with classes, just come to Donham. We stay to we 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 stay doing we stay for the weekend, 
then on Monday you can go and teach and in the evenings you go to school. So uh, I don't know, but it never took long. And then there's a day my mom called us just as we were in the house. As I was planning to go back to Yoki Banda Atena. And she just convened a short meeting and she addressed us and told us that uh, uh, you people, uh, Dickens, Uta Takwa Mojawetu, Kwanza Leo, this will be your home. I'll be your mother. <laughs> and I feel at home and do not uh, think about any other problem. You have a home, you have a place you're able to go and have a bath. The kitchen is there. And you know, during the time I was living in, I was, I was living that, I was sleeping in that kibanda. Anytime my mom would see me come here, she she'd first me ask me to go to find something to eat before I would sit down. She literally asked me because before you sit down in the kitchen. You know, I would come when I'm so hungry. But she, and you know, how I, I don't know, but I got oh to I, I got to <laughs> we got to like to Lingiana, like she was some woman or mother who had met who was a, a long time family friend or who had even met my parents mm. and now when she told me she's called Pamela Ondieki and my mother was called Pamela yeah. I was like maybe maybe something God is trying to do here it's just that you know this is a real life story where you know one day you're homeless and you have nothing and you have nobody and then you know someone opens up their home to you and they and they tell you that you know, you know, she's your mom. Hearing those words, her saying that, you know, that you have a mother, how did that make you, I mean, how did you feel when you had those words? I think I'm, it's not that I'm lucky, it's just a blessing from God to have her and everything she's been able to do for me, for my brother. And she, she does not just live with three kids. Our, 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 our biological kids are three. But she has three more of us. Uh, she takes care of two, a nephew and a niece, and myself. I know she's a widow. She lost her husband in 2008. So what do you do right now? So today, uh, I am an online content producer, a reporter, uh, editor at Nation. Wow. Uh, for, I, I produce online content for the Nation and NTV. Mm. And that university that I used to look at, I'm um, also the current chairperson of the School of Journalism University of Nairobi. Oh, madam, sorry, forgive us. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and I mean, you know, for someone who's standing right outside nation now, Hana, Hana Viatu, Hana Nguo, Manze, Hana Malekulala, Ajakula Skutatu, look like right now, Mtutu say mwenye na feel ni kama ako rock bottom, below rock bottom, Hana Ochisho say. If you are engulfed in a great deal of hopelessness and disparity, there are three main things you should you are supposed to do. Kitiya kwanza ni masomo. There is nothing that changes lives a great deal than education. I'm sorry I got to say this. My mother told me that there's nothing that is called peer pressure. When I was growing, she told me akunaga kitukam peer pressure. Apo injo tambiwa. Don't do something bad because somebody else is, else is doing that. Just make sure that you decide what you know it's good for you. And then, Mungu, atakusaidia na utafika tupali unataka. Where is your brother right now? So, my brother is a second year at UN School of Journalism. Mm. Uh, he, also wants to, he also wants to pursue journalism. Yeah, but okay. he wants to become a producer. All right. But November, not November, last year mid when I was, uh, when I wasn't having, you know, sort of funds to support him. I, he just decided to become a watchman. He told me, Dickens, you provide for everything, our house rent, food, clothing, but I'm just here, I don't have anything to do. So I'm just going to become a guard. So as we speak, he's a, a guard. So he dropped out. He, 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 you know, he attended three semesters, 100% attendance, but he would not be able to do exams. What can you tell people at home about your mom, if you were to describe her in a few words? She's a very selfless mother, she's compassionate. And another thing with her, she, I think she's so godly because she always makes sure that 
wherever you are, you make sure you tell her where you are. And uh, she always also wants to know what you are doing. And she, I think she leads us in the way of the Lord, and that's even more great than anything about her. And now we finally get to meet Mom. Mambo Mom. Hi. Hi, Tui. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You're so beautiful. Thank you. And so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mom, mm -hmm. you lost your husband. Yeah. In 2008. Yeah, it's two, 2007. 2007. It was two, 2007, mm. I think. 2007. Now, in Africa, in a lot of different communities and, you know, cultures and what have you, you know, widows and you know to some extent even widowers do go through a very difficult period of time after your partner has passed on mm -hmm. of course um did you go through any difficulty or was it an easy you know a much simpler transition for you it wasn't easy at all not at all because after that you're on your own that's what i can say mm -hmm. So you have three kids, yeah. your own biological children, yeah. three of them, yeah. and you now took in not one, not two. I mean, let's start from the very first time that you decided you want to be a foster mom. So after some time is when I get uh, Dickens' case now. Dickens, my son comes to me one day and then tells me, Mom, I have a friend in church by the name Dickens, but I've, I think you have seen him. You know, Erica, so many friends, so he used to leave church in the afternoon on Saturdays, come home with so many friends. So I was like, who is this Dickens? At Mom, Yulia Naka, you know, he started explaining. What? And then he told me, okay, Mom, it's like Dickens has a problem. And then I asked him, have you tried to talk to him and find out what the problem is? He tells me, no, but we will find out. But later, he came and told me, find out that this, this boy has a, stays in a, in a school where he, he teaches. He's a teacher, but he, he has nowhere to sleep. As in, he waits for pupils to get out in, of school in the evening. Then he comes back and uh, he, had, he, had, he packed his things, I don't know where. And then he sleeps in that classroom. And then I was like... Does he have a blanket? Does he have a mattress? At mom, it seems that he doesn't have anything. Then how is he making? No, we have, we have decided in our ambassador's club, we get some money, we get him a room so that he can have somewhere to sleep. Then I told him, it's okay. I think it was after a day, he comes back and tells me, we have, we have gotten a room for him. And then uh, I asked Eric, does he have everything? Does he have a mattress? Eric tells me, no. Then I told him, no, since we have an extra mattress, we have a bed, we have an extra wall, everything. At least I did some shopping for him, and then we packed the things. I told Eric, go and make him comfortable. So after some time, Eric comes to me and tells me, Mom, it's like Dickens is not managing where we put him to stay. Because of the, he can't raise the rent. Then I told him, we have a big room for him. Let him come and join us. We have no problem. As we approach Mother Mother's Day and we celebrate Mom's thanks to Geisha, well, in partnership with Geisha, um, you know, we keep talking about that long-lasting, unconditional, you know, love that a mother has mm -hmm. for for her child. Mm -hmm. What does motherhood mean to you? It means a lot. Loving and caring. When you see your children around you. They are happy. Let's say when you cook a meal and then they are enjoying on the table, you cannot even eat. You just get satisfied. You just feel that is. And um, when you see them go through school as a mother, you feel good. So that's what mother means. Mm. To be a mother, mm. that's all I can say. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know, mom, you know, like I said, you know, just having this very big family mm -hmm. and, and loving all of these children and just being so moved. We had to cut so many times, <laughs> you know, just to be so moved with mm -hmm. their, by their story. Mm -hmm. Geisha wanted to say thank you so much. So we wanted to give you 30,000 bob. Just oh my God, as, as for my told. children. <laughs> well, for you. No, 
for you, for you, because you've done enough for the children. This one is now specifically just for you. This is oh my for you God, just to say Amina. thank you. Oh my say God, that, you thank know, you, you. You've been amazing and you've loved these children and may God bless you even more to thank love one more thank children. Thank you, thank you. And you're amazing. That's what I wanted to say. So, so mom, to go to tonight, I can put some. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for being so awesome. Yes. So, guys, I wanted to give to you, you know, thirty thousand bob. And oh my god! Oh my god! Thank you, guys. Thank you. Look at me as I try to get all of them, but <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Gesha, thank you. And it says thank you, mom. Now it's all about appreciating moms out there, and I know there's so many different moms. There are moms who are foster moms. There are moms who, you know, gave birth to become moms. There are moms mm -hmm. who adopted to become moms. And it doesn't matter how you became a mom. You're a mom. We thank you, and Gesha wants to thank you with the hashtag mom and Akwita. You can participate in the ongoing campaign and tell us your mom's story, so that even us come to uh, come Dickens, come to Dickens, we can come through and we can celebrate with your mom oh, yes. imagine so Dickens there you go now you've gotten your mom money you've gotten your mom <laughs> gifts this is amazing Mother's Day is coming up and it's coming up fast thank you so much for inviting us to your home thank you so much the hashtag is here Mina at the trend live if you want us to come to your home hit us up and let us know